we had studied that proteins are nothing but made up of chains of amino acids which have different structures that is in the given time how much the reaction is taking place so that is the progress of the reaction and how much energy is being utilized it is shown in the y axis primary secondary tertiary and quaternary structures Hello everyone a warm welcome to another session on chapter 9 that is bio molecules i'm dr divya biology faculty vidyashram pri university college mysore temple of excellence so in the previous session we had talked about the dynamic state of a living organism and in that we studied about a term called as turnover and we also studied about the metabolic pathway wherein we understood that there is two types of metabolic pathways one is the anabolic pathway and the other one is the catabolic pathway and also we had studied about the living state of an organism and we understood that all organisms they survive in an environment or the living state of an organism is a non equilibrium steady state means it is a steady state but they never attain equilibrium why do they never attain equilibrium because if a organism attains equilibrium means the organisms none of the biochemical pathways or the metabolic pathways are functioning in an organism so if all these has to function properly then the organism should be in a non equilibrium steady state so in today's class we shall completely concentrate on enzymes how enzymes bring about a chemical reaction what are the substrate what are the products what is the active site in an enzyme all these and the transition state of an enzyme all these we shall study in today's session so we shall start with enzymes so what are enzymes enzymes are nothing but protein so therefore enzymes are also made up of chains of amino acids why because they are nothing but protein so what any uh, protein or any compound which brings about or which alters the rate of a chemical reaction in this case which speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction is nothing but an enzyme because if a chemical reaction takes place or if any biochemical reaction takes place in a body in a metabolic pathway if the enzymes are present then that chemical reaction will actually speed up so what are these enzymes actually they are nothing but all the enzymes are proteins therefore they are made up of chains of amino acids so all enzymes are proteins and in enzymes there is a special class of enzymes which are produced by the nucleic acids so what are nucleic acids we know that the dna is actually which is uh, nothing but dna that is the genetic material not just the dna even the rna as well that is deoxyribonucleic acids and the uh, ribonucleic acids so these actually are made up of different nucleic acids such as adenine guanine cytosine thymine and if it is a rna instead of thymine it is made up of uracil so these nucleic acids they actually behave like some enzyme so those nucleic acids which behave like enzymes are called as the ribozyme so this is one important term so under enzymes there is a special type of enzyme which are called as ribozymes which are nothing but the nucleic acids that are present in the genetic material they actually start behaving like an enzyme so the nucleic acid itself starts behaving like an enzyme and it will speed up a chemical reaction because i had already told you that enzymes are nothing but those which speeds up a chemical reaction so these are nothing but the ribozymes and next talking about the structure of the enzyme so enzymes one can depict an enzyme by a line diagram so by a simple line diagram an enzyme can be depicted why because you know that uh, when we talk about the structure of the protein there is the primary structure the secondary the tertiary the quaternary structures right so how is how are they being depicted just like a line diagram so here also same way enzymes are nothing but proteins right so they also can be depicted by a line diagram so just like this like a line diagram this is the ribozyme enzyme so ribozyme enzymes are nothing but can you see the double helical structure here wherein the nucleic acids are present so these nucleic acids they themselves they get converted and they function like a 
enzyme. So such enzymes are nothing but the ribozyme. So the, that structure is of a ribozyme here. And in general, if we need to depict an enzyme, an enzyme can be drawn or it can be shown or it can be depicted just by drawing a simple line diagram in the form of a line diagram it can be drawn. So we shall move on to the different types of structures of the enzyme. So um, as I told you re recall again and again as I told you enzymes are nothing but proteins. So proteins we had studied about proteins right we had studied that proteins are nothing but made up of chains of amino acids which have different structures that is primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structures right just like that here also enzymes because they are made up of proteins they can be easily depicted in the form of a line structure just by drawing lines and their structure is mainly primary structure secondary structure and tertiary structure so we shall look into each of these one by one so primary structure of enzyme. So primary structure of enzyme is nothing but amino acid sequence of the protein. A stretch of amino acid sequence wherein we had learnt about the C terminal end and the N terminal end, right? Right. So this is the primary structure. It is nothing but in a linear form in one line the amino acids are arranged with each other or are bonded to each other and they form a simple structure, a single line structure. So primary structure of enzymes are nothing but those enzymes in which the amino acid sequence of the proteins are arranged at a stretch forming a linear structure will form the primary structure of the enzyme. Next talking about the secondary structure of the enzyme. So secondary structure uh, therefore in the proteins because enzymes are nothing but proteins they are made up of proteins we can see some form of a helical like arrangement some twisting and coiling would have occurred in that particular linear structure so that twisting and coiling is nothing but to some extent it is the secondary structure so that twisting and coiling to some extent is nothing but the secondary structure of the enzyme so next talking about the tertiary structure of the enzyme so tertiary structure of the enzyme is the one that actually the backbone of the protein chain so here this backbone of the protein chain that is there again it folds further so further folding that is they fold upon itself so the backbone of the protein chain it actually folds upon itself in a crisscross manner so you can see here haphazardly like how so uh, if you remember I had given in the previous session while talking about the arrangement of amino acids or the structure of the proteins I had told you this is just like a wool or a thread bound around a some stick so just roll a stick take a stick and roll the thread in a neatly manner it will become the secondary structure but again those wool or something you just remove it again and hold fold it like this in a haphazard manner just like this it will become a tertiary structure so it is nothing but a tertiary structure so what happens the backbone of the protein folds that is the secondary structure that is the backbone of the protein chain they fold upon itself and they form a crisscross like arrangement just like this haphazard arrangement they form a crisscross like arrangement and it results in the formation of many crevices or pockets. So what are crevices? Here this is one crevice here is one crevice or pocket like structures you can see crevices here. So in between there are crevices here, somewhere here there is a crevice. So these crevices or pocket like structure will result in the tertiary structure because of uh, haphazard folding of the protein chain. So one such pocket is the active site of the enzyme. So these tertiary structure is one of the important stage or structure of the enzyme because all the chemical reactions if it or any biochemical reaction if it has to occur then it is based on the tertiary structure of the enzyme why because they have a active site say for example this is an enzyme which has a structure like this so here somewhere it will have a active site. Can you see here the folding? 
we can see the folding there are many crevices and pocket like structures and all that and in one of the crevices or pocket one such pocket is the active site so this is the active site of the enzyme so an active site of an enzyme is a crevice or it is a pocket into which the substrate fits can you see here the enzyme they look like this it is depicted like this wherein because of the tertiary folding of the secondary structure of the enzyme or because of the tertiary foldings of the uh, proteins what happens a lot of crevices or pockets so this is one pocket this is a second pocket pockets are formed or crevices are formed so among these crevices or pockets one one pocket is the active site of the enzyme in one of the pocket lies the active site of the enzyme and not just that this there is a substrate so this is the enzyme actually so when will the reaction takes place to the enzyme when a substrate comes and binds then only the reaction will take place so here what happens a substrate will come and bind here so this is the substrate so this one what i have drawn it is the substrate so this substrate will come and bind here so it is the substrate so what happens in an active site of an enzyme is a crevice or pocket into which the substrate fits so into this active site a substrate will come and bind so thus enzymes through their active site they actually catalyze the rate reactions at a higher rate because i told you even in the absence of an enzyme also a particular biochemical reaction will take place inside the body but the uh, function of the enzyme is to catalyze the rate of the reaction that is it will speed up the rate of a reaction if it has to speed up the rate of the reaction what will happen in the tertiary structure of the enzyme there are many foldings which results in the formation of pockets or cavities so or crevices or pockets so in one of such crevices is present an active site so this active site to that particular active site a substrate will come and bind so once the substrate binds what happens it will speed up a chemical reaction so therefore what does this means thus enzymes through their active site they will catalyze the reactions at a higher rate so the reaction will take place but once the enzyme comes into action wherein the substrate will become and bind then the speed of the reaction will actually increase to a greater extent so therefore tertiary structure is one of the important stages or structure of the enzyme to speed up a chemical reaction so next we shall talk about the chemical reaction so here you know reactions are of different types it can be either physical reaction or chemical reaction so when we talk about physical reaction is something which we can see happening in front of our eyes say for example the melting of ice right so ice you just keep it uh, outside in front of your eyes you can see it melting that is a physical reaction or when you keep water for boiling when it starts boiling to a greater extent what happens you can see the water evaporating that is also a physical reaction but chemical reactions cannot be seen as such so here what happens in the chemical reaction is there is breaking up of a bond or there is making up of a new bond so therefore when bonds are broken and when new bonds are formed during the process of transformation that particular process is called as the chemical reaction again here in under chemical reaction there are two types one is the inorganic chemical reaction and the other one is the organic chemical reaction so here you can see the barium hydroxide in the presence of so this barium hydroxide in the presence of sulfuric acid forms barium sulfate so it is a simple reaction here which is a inorganic reaction why it is a inorganic reaction it is why because it is taking place outside you are adding chemicals here what you are doing you are adding barium hydroxide to that barium hydroxide you are adding sulfuric acid to see what happens what will happen here it will split into barium sulfate or barium will combine with the sulfate to form barium combines with sulfate to form barium sulfate and 
water is liberated. So, 2H2O. This is an inorganic reaction. Next, talking about organic chemical reaction. Organic chemical reaction takes place inside a body that is inside a living organism. Here, the one of the best example is the hydrolysis of starch into glucose. So, here the hydrolysis of starch into glucose, it is an organic chemical reaction. So, we know that starch uh, or in the body, say for example, photosynthesis. So, during photosynthesis, what happens? The light energy will be converted into chemical energy. So, what is the chemical energy? It is being converted into when the light falls on the plants, the carbon dioxide and water gets converted into glucose and that glucose will be stored in the plant as starch right and whenever it is needed that starch again gets converted into glucose that is a organic chemical reaction here so here what happens the hydrolysis of starch to glucose the conversion of starch into glucose is an organic chemical reaction and here again there is a rate in the change of or rate in bringing about a physical or a chemical reaction so what is a physical reaction i had told you the melting of ice it is a physical physical reaction or the conversion of a chemical compound into something else is a chemical reaction. So here what happens, the best example I gave you was the uh, one example for inorganic chemical reaction, one, for, one more for organic chemical reaction. So here what is the rate of this physical and chemical reaction? So here what is meant by this? So rate of a physical or chemical reaction actually refers to the amount of product formed per unit. So when a chemical reaction is occurring, at the end a certain product is being formed, right? Say for example here, there are two chemicals that are used here. One is barium hydroxide and the other one is sulfuric acid. So they combine, so they are the chemicals that are combining. So they are combining and they are forming a product here. What is the product that they are forming here? It is barium sulfate. So how much of barium sulfate has been formed? For example, that is nothing but the rate of a chemical reaction. So here, the rate of a chemical process or the rate of a chemical reaction refers to the amount of product formed per unit time because here the reaction will keep on taking place and the product keeps on forming. So at that particular, for one minute, how many, how much barium sulfate is being formed? So that is nothing but the rate of a chemical reaction or the rate of a physical process if it is an example of a physical process. So here it can be, so there is a formula that actually to represent the rate of a physical or a chemical reaction. So the rate of a reaction is equal to the amount of product formed. So delta P divided by delta P, that is the amount of product that is formed at a per unit time that is per unit time maybe in one minute or maybe in two minute depends so per unit time so the rate of a chemical reaction is equal to the amount of product that is formed per unit time so delta p divided by delta t where p is the p is the product and t is the time and this rate of a chemical reaction is actually influenced by a number of factor wherein temperature plays a very important role so depending on the temperature and depending on the enzyme that is acting whether an enzyme is acting on it or not acting on it the rate of a chemical reaction also depends so among different types of factors that influence the rate of a reaction the main factor that influences the rate of a reaction is the temperature and the rate of a reaction doubles or it can decrease or it can become half, half, it can decrease or it can double every 10 degree change in either direction. So, if the temperature changes for at even 10 degree centigrade also, the rate of a reaction Either it can be positive or it can be negative. Either the rate of a reaction can double, it can speed on up or the rate of a reaction can slow down or it can decrease for every 10 degree change in direction means it depends on the temperature. So if the temperature changes, even 10 degree change in temperature also, 10 degree if the temperature become less, less also, it will alter the rate of reaction and if it becomes 10 degree more also, it will alter the rate of 
reaction say for example some reaction requires heating why do you heat it because heating will increase the temperature therefore it will speed up the rate of reaction so while working in the chemistry lab you would have understood sometimes what you do you don't heat it you just keep it as such for a few minutes in the room temperature why because that temperature is sufficient to bringing about a reaction so therefore temperature is one of the important factors which actually affects the rate of the physical or a chemical process so physical process say for example again their temperature plays a role if you keep it outside in the room temperature ice will melt right but it will take a longer time the same thing if you increase the temperature by just heating the ice it will melt very quickly within seconds on the other hand if you keep it in the refrigerator where it is uh, 6 degree or 4 degree centigrade it will remain in the ice state itself so therefore be it physical or chemical process temperature is one of the important factors that actually alter the rate of a chemical or a physical reaction so here how the chemical reactions get catalyzed so we know that for the catalysis of a chemical reaction the enzymes are needed so we shall study about that now so usually the catalyzed reactions so process at rates fastly higher than that of the uncatalyzed one so when i say catalyzed reaction means we need to understand that in that particular reaction enzymes are taking part or enzymes are involved so therefore when enzymes are involved in a particular reaction they act as catalyst speeding up the rate of the reaction they will not alter the reaction so catalysts are the ones which do not alter the reaction but they will speed up the rate of a reaction so therefore here the reaction gets catalyzed or it gets speeded up when an enzyme is involved on the other hand the uncatalyzed reaction the reaction will take place but the rate of the reaction will be very very slow there so when enzymes when an enzyme catalyzes the reaction the rate would be vastly higher than that of the uncatalyzed reaction so that is what i meant so easier way to understand is any reaction that is taking place metabolic pathway or a bio chemical reaction taking place inside a body if a enzyme is involved in that then the rate of the reaction will become speeder but if an enzyme is not involved then it will become slower that therefore meaning that catalyzed reactions are speeder or greater in terms of reaction when it comes to the uncatalyzed one why catalyzed reactions are speeder because enzymes are involved there uncatalyzed reaction there enzymes are not involved but the reaction will occur but in a slower rate so the one of the best example we can see here carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide combines with water to form carbonic acid so this is carbonic acid so here without there is an enzyme being involved in the reaction can you see here so always understand whenever the last word ase comes it means it is an enzyme so here carbonic anhydrase is an enzyme that is involved in the reaction so this reaction will occur even in the absence of carbonic anhydrase as well even in the absence of enzyme but the rate of reaction or the amount of carbonic acid that is formed which is the product so this is the end product so this is a product but the amount of product that is formed will be lesser in a minute why because enzyme will not be involved so it is a uncatalyzed reaction so on the other hand here the example that i have given what i have done is here carbon dioxide reacts with water and to speed up the reaction an enzyme is also taking part there which is the enzyme it is carbonic anhydrase so carbon dioxide reacts with water in the presence of an enzyme carbonic anhydrase to form carbonic acid so here what happens in the absence of an enzyme this reaction is very very slow your carbonic acid will be formed even if carbonic anhydrase enzyme is not taking part but the only thing is the reaction will be very very slow here so the reaction is very slow that is say for example in an hour for an hour what happens only about 200 molecules of carbonic acid will be formed so i'll write it here so here carbon dioxide plus water gives carbonic acid 
Say for example, here enzyme is not involved. Did I write carbonic anhydrase? No, enzyme is not involved. So in the absence of an enzyme, this reaction will occur, but it is very, very slow. That is for an hour, only 200 carbonic acid molecules will get formed. So 200 carbonic acid per hour it will get formed. Now we shall see the same thing if it is in the presence of an enzyme. So if the enzyme is present, so in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme, that is what happens here is the reaction speed will greatly increase to about 6 lakh molecules. Can you Imagine here, there it was just in the absence of enzyme, how many molecules of carbonic acid had formed? Only 200 molecules. That is, to form 200 molecules, it took one hour. In one hour, 200 molecules of carbonic acid had formed. But on the other hand, in the presence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, the same reaction in for every second, there it was for one hour without the presence of enzyme, for one hour, 200 molecules of carbonic acid was getting formed. But here, within a second, that is for every second here, 6 lakh molecules of carbonic acid is formed with the same reaction but in the presence of the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. So now you might have understood the importance of the enzyme here. So if the enzyme is there, not there also chemical reaction will occur as such but the amount of end product that is formed is very very less. But on the other hand, if the same reaction takes place in the presence of an enzyme, the end product that you get is of greater quantity and also within very short time, too many molecules of the product can be got. So that is the difference. So therefore, an enzyme accelerates the reaction rate by 10 million times. Can you imagine where is 200 and where is 6 lakh? That to 200 per hour and 6 lakh in a second. So imagine 10 million times it is greater. It is speeding up the reaction 10 million times. So therefore enzyme is very very important to catalyze a reaction. So enzymes are very important in any metabolic pathway in order to speed up the reaction. So next we shall see the chemical reaction. So chemical reaction, we shall see what a metabolic pathway is. So metabolic pathway is usually here in a metabolic pathway, it is a multi-step process. So a reaction can simply take place in just one step or a reaction, chemical reaction can take place in multiple steps. So each of the step in a multi-step reaction is catalyzed by the same enzyme complex or a different enzyme complex. So sometimes, as I told you, any chemical reaction get just take place in one single step and just finish off. Sometimes it requires a multiple step. So when a multiple step reaction is taking place, either the same enzyme can participate in all the steps of the enzyme reaction or uh, different enzymes can participate in that particular chemical reaction. So such a pathway is called as the metabolic pathway. So we all have a very simple example which is easy to understand the glycolysis cycle. So what happens during glycolysis? Where will glycolysis start? It starts with the glucose and the end product that is got through glycolysis is pyruvic acid, right? So don't think I have written here glucose gets converted into pyruvic acid. So glucose in the presence of oxygen, glucose combines with oxygen to form pyruvic acid releasing water. Don't think it is a one step reaction, it is a simple step, no. When it comes to metabolic pathway, lots of steps are involved and lots of steps enzymes are involved in each of these steps. So therefore, the conversion of glucose to pyruvic acid. So this is the substrate that is there. So this is the end product that is got. So if we need to get this end product, if glucose has to be converted into pyruvic acid, it has to go through a metabolic pathway called as the glycolysis cycle, wherein different types of compounds are involved and the reaction is speeded up by various different enzymes. So therefore, 
it is a multi step reaction and it is a best example for a metabolic pathway so glucose becomes pyruvic acid through 10 different enzymes so if glucose has to become pyruvic acid 10 different enzymes has to work on their own in each of the different steps so therefore it will catalyze the metabolic reaction why is it called a metabolic reaction different steps are involved here if it is a multi step process then it is a metabolic pathway in this metabolic pathway 10 different enzymes are being involved therefore leading to a metabolic reaction so this is about the metabolic pathway so next talking so the metabolic pathway which we had mentioned so what was the example that i had taken to mention multi step reaction wherein i told you glucose gets converted into pyruvic acid though when writing in it looks very simple in one line but it is a tremendous process it is a cycle which involves different types of enzymes say about 10 enzymes are being involved there so the metabolic pathway with one or two additional reaction it gives rise to a various types of metabolic end products again here say for example depending on the type of reaction also there are different types we'll take the example of a metabolic pathway that is taking place in a skeletal muscles that is the muscles adhering to the skeleton or that is sticking to the skeletal that is a skeleton or we'll talk about the skeletal muscles under anaerobic condition so we all know that when we are doing tremendous amount of exercise what happens enough oxygen doesn't get supplied to the muscle therefore it leads to a anaerobic condition wherein the lactic acid gets formed the pyruvic acid so glucose what happens in the presence of oxygen it gets converted into pyruvic acid but the same glucose if oxygen is not there it gets converted to pyruvic acid and that pyruvic acid because of the non availability of oxygen it undergoes a anaerobic process wherein it gets converted into lactic acid that is why during exercise and all we get lots of cramps because of the formation of the lactic acid again two types of processes occurring here under normal condition what happens the glucose gets converted into pyruvic acid that is under aerobic condition same metabolic pathway what is the metabolic pathway that is taking place here the conversion of glucose into pyruvic acid but here again when oxygen availability is there glucose gets converted into pyruvic acid but when oxygen availability is not there whatever pyruvic acid is there that will again get converted into lactic acid so here under normal aerobic condition pyruvic acid is formed but under anaerobic condition lactic acid is formed so therefore the chemical reaction in the metabolic pathway also depends on the availability of something so here availability of what availability of the oxygen and say for example in yeast yeast actually we all know that it brings about fermentation right so whenever a uh, alcoholic beverage say for example wine and all that is prepared yeast is added so that it speeds up the fermentation process so in yeast during fermentation the same metabolic pathway that is here glucose has to get converted into pyruvic acid but what happens the glucose gets converted into ethanol the reaction is same but what happens here it is a fermentation process in the presence of yeast yeast will react on that particular substrate and it will convert that particular substrate into ethanol so the end product so if you see here the end product got when the oxygen availability of was there the end product was pyruvic acid but when the oxygen availability was not there the end product was lactic acid again here during fermentation process the end product is ethanol so the metabolic pathway is the same but the end products that are formed is completely different so therefore here hence different conditions different products are possible so depending on the condition depending on the availability and the unavailability of the oxygen different products get formed though the pathway that is the same so that is one of the important concept of the metabolic pathway or a chemical reaction so this is about the chemical reaction which depends on the condition to which it is subjected to say for example again i'm repeating say for example if it is subjected to aerobic condition 
then glucose gets converted into pyruvic acid or on the other hand if it is subjected to anaerobic condition the glucose that converted got converted into pyruvic acid that pyruvic acid will get converted into lactic acid on the other hand if it is a fermentation process again uh, anaerobic process here if it is a fermentation where yeast is taking part in the fermentation process then it will lead to the production of glucose gets converted into ethanol which is the alcohol so therefore though the metabolic pathways are same depending on the condition the end product will be different so we know about now different types of chemical reactions that occurs we talked about organic reactions inorganic chemical reaction again we talked about how enzyme will speed up the chemical reaction and also we talked about depending on the temperature how it will alter the reaction and also depending on um, and also we talked about depending on the condition that is availability of something and the unavailability of the other what will happen to the chemical reaction all that we have understood so now it will be easy for us to understand how enzymes actually bring about or how do they actually speeden up the rate of a reaction so we shall learn how do enzymes bring about such high rates of chemical conversions or chemical reactions so enzymes are nothing but proteins which is having a three dimensional structure so the tertiary structure of the enzyme is very very important to bring about a reaction so i told you they are made up of proteins which has a three dimensional structure so what is the three dimensional structure that i had drawn so it has a three dimensional structure including an active site so this is the this i told you because of the three dimensional structure a lot of crevices or pockets are formed which is nothing but the active site which includes an active site and they convert a substrate into product so what happens here is to this active site a product will come and bind so this is the product so this whole thing it is the product it is like a lock and key how the inside locks hole how the key fits in right so just like that this is also a lock and key model so this is the substrate so this is the substrate so into this substrate it will come and bind like a so enzyme is the lock here the substrate is the key so it will come and bind so to that crevices or to the active site the substrate will come and bind so when the substrate comes and binds it will lead to the formation of a product so here what happens here is to the enzyme the substrate will come and bind therefore giving a product that is i told you there uh, what happened uh, in the presence of that is there was barium sulfate which combined with water and the chemical reaction speeded up in the presence of the carbonic anhydrase and therefore it formed a product that is carbonic acid so similarly here enzyme is there the substrate will go and bind to the enzyme therefore the reaction will get speeded up and therefore it will end up in forming a product here and the substrate which is represented as s has to bind to the enzyme at its active site within a given cleft or pocket so in this pocket exactly so can any key fit into any lock can you open any lock with any key no the key will be designed in such a way so that it can fit into that lock hole, hole of the lock and then it can open the lock right similarly here also the substrate will be designed in such a way that that particular substrate can go and sit itself inside the active site or the pockets or the crevices or the clefts of the enzyme it will go and bind there so the substrate has to move towards the active site and this results in the formation of a enzyme substrate complex can you see here the enzyme was there to this the substrate came and binded now it formed a enzyme substrate complex and this enzyme substrate complex actually it results in the transient phenomenon and that is it will bring about a change what is a transient phenomenon it will speed up the chemical reaction and it will give rise to the end products again here depending on the reaction the number of products will be got will also vary so that is the function of the enzyme so how again the 
substrate will go and bind to the enzyme at the active side and the substrate now it will result in the formation of a enzyme substrate complex and this complex formation is a transient phenomenon which actually speeds up a chemical reaction. So now we should know what is the transition state structure. Now we know that once the enzyme binds to the substrate, it forms an enzyme substrate complex which is nothing but a transient phenomenon. So here we shall study about the transition state structure. So I had told you that once enzyme the substrate comes and binds a transient phenomenon will occur. So we shall see what is that particular transient phenomenon that actually occurs. So how do again in the same concept that is how enzymes bring about a chemical reaction we shall study the transition state structure. So what did I tell you the enzyme to the enzyme the substrate will bind to form a product so here what happens first a enzyme substrate complex has to form so here if this is the enzyme so if this is the enzyme so this is the enzyme exactly to this a substrate will come and bind Say for example, here if this is carb this is carbonic anhydrase, the enzyme, what substrate should go and bind there? That is carbon dioxide and water should go and bind there, right? So here one substrate will come and bind. So it has to have the shape exactly like this so that it can go and bind. Say for example, one substrate will go and bind here. So this is the so this is the enzyme, this is the substrate. Now what will happen when it goes and binds? It forms the enzyme substrate complex. So now this is the enzyme substrate complex. So here during this state where a substrate is bound to the active site of the enzyme a new structure of the substrate will be formed which is called as the transition state structure. So this substrate now it will go and bind. So what is the substrate say for example is going and binding here it is the carbon dioxide and the water say for example if it goes and binds here this enzyme will speed up the reaction converting this particular substrate into carbonic acid which is the end product. So that is nothing but now this substrate is in a transition state. It is taking out the help of an enzyme to form an end product. Therefore, the substrate is in a transition state now. So very soon after the expected bond breaking or making whatever is taking place there, it is completed, the product will be released. Now this substrate after the transition it will get released. So what is this enzyme? What enzyme example? Carbonic anhydrase enzyme. So carbonic anhydrase enzyme to this carbonic anhydrase enzyme, the carbon dioxide and water, whatever substrate is there, it will go and bind. So now that substrate, it is undergoing a transition state. Why? Because the enzyme is converting the substrate. So after the transition state is over, the substrate will get converted into the product and it will be released from the enzyme. It will be released from the enzyme therefore getting the end product. So that is what it means. So here once the substrate goes and binds to the enzyme the making up or the breaking up of the bonds will occur. The structure of the substrate will get altered therefore forming the end product which will be released from the active site of the enzyme. Now the substrate gets released from the active site of the enzyme. It will get separated and that substrate will be the product. For example, it will become the carbonic acid. So that will be the product or in other words, the structure of the substrate gets transformed into the structure of the product. So imagine carbon dioxide, the structure is completely different, right? So that structure gets altered into the structure of the product. How it gets altered? That is because of the alteration of the substrate which is brought about by the enzyme. So enzyme will speed up the alteration process here. So the pathway of this transformation must go through the so-called state called as the transition state structure. So what is the transition state structure? It is nothing but 
a process wherein the substrate binds to the enzyme therefore altering its structure by the making or breaking of a bond therefore releasing itself from the enzyme and forming a product which is nothing but the so transition what is transition say for example you are transiting so you are trans what is your transition if you're wearing a costume say for example your transition towards that costume you're changing yourself into that particular costume right so similarly here it is getting transition the transition is taking place wherein the substrate is changing itself into the product here so this is nothing but the transition state structure so if a product and product has to be formed therefore the substrate has to change itself or it has to undergo a transition so that is nothing but the transition state structure of an enzyme so this is about the transition state structure of an enzyme so we can see a graph here which actually represents the transition state so you can see the y-axis and the x axis so on the y axis the potential energy has been marked and on the x axis the progress of reaction so what is the progress of reaction to in the given time how much the reaction is taking place so that is the progress of the reaction and how much energy is being utilized it is shown in the y axis so you can see here they have given mentioned about substrate and the product so here the substrates are involved in the reaction. Why? Because in the substrate is the one that has to go and bind to the enzyme, right? So here you can see a transition state. And one thing you need to remember here is if the product is at the lower level when compared to the substrate, then the for energy is not needed. What energy? Say for example, I had told you when you are performing some experiment in the chemical lab, uh, sometimes you heat a chemical right why so that the you add two chemicals and to bring about the reaction you'll heat the chemical why because you're supplying heat energy or thermal energy to that so that it will speed and up the reaction and the reaction on the end product will be got so that that is a state where, wherein if the product is lying at the lower level than the substrate then no heating is required that is it is an exothermic reaction here energy is not needed for the reaction to take place so here reaction will occur in the absence of the enzyme or well or in the absence of the temperature so here activation energy without the enzyme but whereas on the vice versa if the product is present above the level than the substrate then it is a lot of energy is being required there so that is the difference here so here activation energy with the enzyme will take place that is here what they mean to show is that so uh, by looking at this graph one thing we can understand is that if an enzyme is taking part in a reaction then the energy that is required for the reaction is very very less or any energy sort of energy is not needed for the reaction to take place why because the enzyme itself will speed up the rate of the reaction therefore the substrate gets converted into the product so here activation energy with enzyme can you see here can you see the graph here very less less energy is required for the substrate to get converted into the product but on the other hand can you see here here activation energy without enzyme here if the enzyme is not involved in a particular reaction the energy that is involved to bring about the rate of reaction is quite high why because enzymes are not there if enzyme is there enzymes itself will provide enough energy for the reaction to take place or energy is not at all needed or required in very less amount because the enzyme itself will help in bringing about the rate of the reaction on the other hand if the enzymes are not involved in the rate of reaction then the energy is required that is the time when you have to heat the product to in order to provide energy to it so the, that is why in, in some of the in chemical lamps whenever some of the reactions you heat to bring about get an end product and sometimes you do not depending on the enzyme that is taking part in that of 
or depending on whether the enzyme is taking part in that or whether the enzyme is not taking part in that. So that is about the transition state. So this is a graph that actually helps us to understand the transition state which states that in the presence of enzyme very less energy is needed to bring about a reaction. On the other hand in the absence of enzyme too much of energy is needed to bring about a reaction in order to get a end product therefore a little bit of the heat energy energy or the thermal energy is needed there. So therefore we need to heat that particular um, components in order to speeden up the reaction or to get a product at the end. So this is about the transition state. So I hope you understood the session very well wherein you, we studied today only about the enzymes wherein we studied what an enzyme is, the different types of the structure of the enzymes and we came to know that tertiary structure of the enzyme is one of the important structure of the enzyme which actually takes part in the uh, reactions, chemical reactions and we came to know about the uh, that is lock and key model wherein we came to know how the end substrate goes and binds to the enzyme and how it speedens up the chemical reaction wherein we took different examples to explain that all that and also we understood how an enzyme brings about a chemical reaction and what is the transition state of an enzyme or uh, how a substrate binds to an enzyme and converts itself in order to form a end product. So all this we studied in today's session. So in the coming session we shall study about the factors that affect the rate of a reaction. So there are different factors one we know knew about temperature. Apart from temperature there are also different factors which actually uh, alters the rate of a reaction of the enzyme or alters the functioning of an enzyme. So that we shall study in the coming session. So I hope you understood the session well. We shall meet again in the coming session. Thank you.